Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can fully transfer your Windows operating system and data from one storage drive to another without losing your Windows license and without losing any files, folders, settings or applications. Here the new storage drive could be a mechanical hard drive or SSD. It could be 2.5 inch, 3.5, M.2, SATA 3, NVMe, it really doesn't matter. The process creates an exact replica of the contents of your computer on another disk. This is sometimes referred to as cloning. Now there are several possible reasons why you may want to do this. The most common use has been for upgrading from mechanical hard disk to SSDs to improve speed and performance. Other possible uses include upgrading from a smaller SSD to a larger SSD or when replacing a failing hard drive. A quick way to identify a failing hard drive is when you begin to hear some glitchy sounds from your hard disk as it spins. For instance, if you hear sounds like this, then you should consider purchasing another storage disk and using this process to completely transfer all you have on your old disk to the new one. More interestingly, it is also possible to use this process to mirror your PC to another PC. In other words, having two computers with the exact same contents. This could come in handy if you want to upgrade to another laptop but you would want to retain every single content of your old laptop. However, there are some important precautions to take when doing this. I will be explaining that later in the video. For this tutorial, I will be using this process to demonstrate how you can upgrade to a larger storage disk without losing anything. Here I am currently using a 120GB SSD, so I will be upgrading to a 240GB. Now this process works for Windows 8, 10 or 11. Here I will be using a Windows 11 for demonstration. It is a pretty straightforward process and requires almost no technical skills. And now without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so first here are the tools we will be using for this process. A screwdriver for disassembling your laptop hard drive cover. A USB SATA adapter cable like this or an M.2 to SATA adapter or some other kind of adapter. Now you might not even need an adapter if for instance you have double hard drive bay or you are upgrading from SATA 3 to M.2 and your PC has both compartments. Here the idea is to have both source and destination drives attached to the same PC. Now of course you will need your new hard drive or SSD as the case may be. Now if you do this often or you have several disks to upgrade, then you might consider purchasing two of these USB to SATA adapters. That way you won't need to install the disk migration tool across each computer. You can simply connect the source and destination disk externally via USB port and then process the migration. With that, the next step would be to download a free OS migration tool. Now there are several of them out there, but for this tutorial, I'll be using the earlier version of Minitool Partition Wizard. I've used this tool in a previous tutorial and like I mentioned, it's quite easy to use and reliable as well. The later versions of this tool no longer have the free migration feature. They require subscription to be able to use this feature. However, the older versions like 10.2 or 11.5, which I'll be using in this tutorial, will allow you to do this migration completely for free. I'll leave the download link down in the video description. From the link in the description, you will land on this page where I've also described this migration process in details. Here where it says version 10.2 and version 11.5, I will simply click on version 11.5. Then on the page that opens, click download and wait for the download to complete. After downloading, click to run the installation. Here select your preferred language and hit OK. Accept the license terms and hit next. 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 Here you can choose whether or not to create desktop shortcut. Hit next and then install. Now before the next step, connect your new disk or SSD to the laptop using the USB SATA adapter cable. And then finish. On this pop-up, click on disk clone. That should launch the copy disk wizard. Here click next. 
then it asks you to select the disk to copy in my case is disk 1 which is the original 120 gig ssd on the laptop i'll hit next then asks for the target disk which is the new 240 gig ssd that i'm upgrading to i will select that and hit next it then reminds me that all the data on the target disk will be destroyed in the process i'm okay with that so i'll hit next here i will leave the default feed partition to entire disk option and hit next it then puts out a note reminding me to configure my bios to boot from the destination disk when next i boot up here i will hit finish it then shows a summary of the selection so i chose to feed partition to entire disk I'm cloning to disk 2 which is my 240GB SSD so all that is correct. Here I will now hit apply and a note pops up recommending that I close all applications before applying the changes. So I'll close down any applications and hit ok to start the migration process. Now if you get past this stage then just wait for the migration process to run as supposed. However, oftentimes you will get this notice saying operation copy partition cannot be completed because drive C is being used now. It's okay to get this notice mainly because some background processes running on your laptop including the disk migration tool makes your C drive appear too busy for the process. So it offers you three options. You either restart, retry or cancel the process. Here I will choose restart now and then wait for the partition wizard to automatically perform the migration process upon restarting. Now as I mentioned earlier, if you'll be performing such migration on several computers, then it helps if you use a different PC to perform the migration. In that case, both the source and the destination disks will be externally attached to the PC running the mini tool partition wizard. If you are able to use this setup, then the migration process would happen seamlessly without restarting your PC and without popping up the error message we saw a moment ago. Now this process will take a while depending on the amount of data you have on your disk, also the performance of your laptop. With higher performing laptop in terms of your processor and RAM, this process could be a lot faster. Also if you have USB 3.0 port then you should definitely use it. It will fasten the process substantially compared to a USB 2.0 port. Ok so the migration process is now complete. We'll now proceed to the final process which is the actual swapping of the old 120GB SSD with a new 240GB SSD. Before we proceed with that, here are a few important warnings. First, we had a note to configure the BIOS to boot from the destination disk when next we boot up. Here's what that implies. Most likely your default BIOS setting is to boot up from your main drive which is usually the C drive. So if you are replacing your hard disk with an SSD or one SSD with another as I will be doing in a moment. Then you don't have to change your BIOS settings. It will automatically boot from the drive it finds attached to your main disk connector. The second thing is the issue of activation or Windows license. First, let's understand what the disk migration implies. It basically means you have successfully copied your Windows to another drive. So you have the same copy of Windows on two separate drives, both activated with the same digital license. Now this doesn't imply that you can run the two copies of Windows on two separate machines. They might run successfully, however, your Windows license is attached to your laptop. So attaching any of the two drives to some other laptop would violate the license terms of your Windows. Hence, you will end up with an unlicensed Windows. You might even lose the license on your main laptop if you use your drive on another laptop and then return it back to your laptop. So to preserve your Windows license, only run the drives on your main laptop. With that said, let's go ahead and swap the old 120GB SSD with the new 240GB that we upgraded. First, I will shut down my laptop, then remove the SATA adapter from my laptop and the SSD. Now, most laptops would have this underneath, but some laptops would have this under the keyboard. In that case, you will need to open the entire laptop to locate your hard drive compartment. Now, in my case, I will carefully unscrew the cover of the hard drive and then replace the old hard drive with the new one. Tighten back all loose screws and then I'm good to go. Now I will power up my laptop normally and here it will boot straight into my new SSD. As you can see from my desktop, all files and folders are exactly as I had them on my old SSD. 
all settings including the Wi-Fi credentials were preserved in the process. And now let's go and check our Windows activation status. Here as you can see the activation status of my Windows is active. So I have successfully transferred my entire system from the old SSD to a new SSD without having to reinstall Windows again and without losing any files, folders, applications or settings. Now like I mentioned earlier in the video, you could also use this process to mirror one laptop to another. So say you want to get a new laptop to replace an old one and you want to maintain the exact same data and settings on your previous one. Then in addition to all the processes already described in the video, you will also need a new license key for the new laptop because usually when you move your cloned disk to another laptop, it will lose the previous license because the license is somewhat tied to the laptop hardware. So moving the software to another laptop would require a separate activation for such laptop. The same goes with the paid apps. So you should ensure you have the required licenses before mirroring your laptop to another one. However, if your new laptop has the license embedded to the chipset, then it will automatically pick up the new license without having to key it in again. And that is it for this tutorial. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and share with anyone you think might want to see. Drop us a comment if you have any questions or feedbacks. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for updates on future tech support videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.